You're admitting everyone in the waiting room. Good afternoon. This is a hearing for the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, June 24th, 2020. We apologize for the delay due to some technological issues, but we believe that has been resolved. As people are admitted from the waiting room, we ask that you mute yourself, please. Please note this hearing is being recorded and will be posted on the city's website at the completion of the hearing. Please note this hearing is being held pursuant to Governor Baker's executive order, temporarily, uh, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law due to the COVID public health crisis, which is what allows us to conduct this hearing virtually. Today's hearing is a mandatory emergency informational hearing regarding all North End licensees. Any licensee who fails to attend today's hearing will be subject to immediate revocation of any temporary extension onto outdoor space granted by the board and potential additional disciplinary action regarding any license. This hearing is being held to address the numerous complaints received by the board, the inspectional services department and various other city departments regarding the operations of certain North End licensees. Complaints received by the board and ISD include but are not limited to the following. Failure to adhere to the guidance issued by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts regarding social distancing and mandatory operational requirements and the board's various advisories regarding the same. Failure to adhere to the terms and conditions of approved temporary extensions onto outdoor space granted by the board and the interdepartmental guidance regarding the same. And failure to adhere to city, state, and federal laws, codes, and ordinances regarding tobacco use and the presence of animals in food service establishments, including on outdoor patios. I will now introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. After she makes introductions, we will be conducting a roll call. Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining us um, and for um, having patience with us while we got started. I want to introduce Commissioner Liam Curran, who's with us today. If you could mute your computer, everyone else. Um, Commissioner Kiana Saxon is with us here today. Um, Assistant Correctional <laughs> Services, Daniel Manning is here today. Joe Dinarello, I think your phone is not on mute, thank you. And the chief engineer for the city of Austin, Todd Liming is here with us today. And I wanna take this um, moment to thank John Romano from the North End of ONS for all of his help with us over the last three weeks of getting the North End extensions up and going and being a great conduit between the city and the neighborhood. And I also wanna take a minute to thank everyone across all city departments that have worked really hard to get the North End outdoor extensions up and going. I'd especially like to thank my own staff, the Executive Secretary Leslie Delaney Hawkins and Rebecca Fu, who is on the phone today. I think every single person on this call is familiar with Rebecca and Leslie. The two of them have working, been working around the clock for the last three weeks on weekends, nights to 3 a.m. to make sure everyone in the North End had an opportunity to take advantage of our outdoor extension process. Chairwoman Joyce, um, I will note that as of today, the licensing board has received at least 50 documented complaints regarding the operations of certain North End licensees through 311. We have all also received numerous phone calls, emails, both uh, personally and professionally, um, and that is why this hearing today has been called. I am now going to begin a roll call of licensees. Please, when I call the name of your licensed premise, please take yourself off of mute and note verbally that you are present. If you do not hear your establishment's name called, please enter your name and the address into the chat function. I will now begin the roll call. Calling El Dente, located at 109 Salem Street. Joe Bono is here. Anthony Cafe located at 250 Commercial Street. Anthony Gator is here. Thank you. And again, please mute yourself unless I have called your license premise and you are identifying as present. Again, if everyone could please mute themselves. 
Antigua Porno, located at 93 Salem Street. Gomez is here. Aqua Paza, 135 Richmond Street. Joseph Di Pasquale is here. Archu, 4 to 6 Prince Street. Johnny Fratteroli is here. Arya Trattoria, 253 Hanover Street. Mas Motaberry is here. No, I have to do that. I have to do that. Asagio, yeah. 49 Prince Street. Joseph Di Pasquale is, is here. Baco, 107 Salem Street. Vina De Paolo mm -hmm. is here. Bencato, 361 Hanover Street. Warren Mustachio is here. And Aventos, 111 Salem Street. Joe Bono is here. Asamazin Todd. Luis Say, 240 Commercial Street. They can't see the camera. Can you please mute yourselves? They can't see you, but they can see you. I have muted all participants. Again, calling Billy Says, 240 Commercial Street. Calling Boston Sail Loft, 80 Atlantic Avenue. James Tipping is here. Brico, 241 Hanover Street. Joseph Dufasquale is here. Cafe Delo Port, 308 Hanover Street. Myvin Spencer present. Cafe Paradiso, 255 Hanover Street. Adrian Federico is here. Cafe Vittoria, 290 Hanover Street. Gerald Riccio is here. Catina Italiana, 346 Hanover Street. John Desimone is here. Carmelinas, 307 Hanover Street. Is there anyone present for Carmelinas? Damien. Oh, yes, yes, Damien Di Paola. Sorry, yeah. Carmelinas. Thank you, noted. Sorry. Casa Reche, 285 Hanover Street. Frank Polino is here. Ciao Bella, 5 North Square. Nick Fratteroli is here. Cobblestone Cafe, 227 Hanover Street. Carla Gomez is here. Crudo, 78 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Prudo located at 78 Salem Street? Prudo, uh, Chris Dow is here. Daily Catch, 65 Atlantic Avenue. Is there anyone present from the Daily Catch? Dino's Cafe, 141 Salem Street. Yes. yes. And Janantali is here. And Moha Sharan is here. Sorry. <laughs> Dolce, 272 Hanover Street. Joseph, this is well. One second, Leslie. So the Daily Catch was here. Who was after the Daily Catch? After the Daily Catch was Dino's Cafe. Yes, Dino's Cafe is present and Janangeli. Dolce Vita, 221 Hanover Street. Is there anyone present from Dolce Vita located at 221 Hanover Street? Dominic's, 54 Salem Street. Damien Di Paola for Dominic's. Ernesto, 69 Salem Street. Is there anyone present for Ernesto, located at 69 Salem Street? Uno Ristorante, 119 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Uno Ristorante, 119 Salem Street? Filippo Ristorante, Ducali Pizzeria, 283 Causeway Street. Philip Frateroli here for Filippo's and Ducali. Fiore's, 250 Hanover Street. Is there anyone present from Fiore's located at 250 Hanover Street? 
Florentine Cafe, 333 Hanover Street. Gennaro Ritchie, Ritchie was here. Forcella, 33 North Square. Nino Trotta for Forcella. Giacomo's, 355 Hanover Street. Is there anyone present from Giacomo's? Yes, Richard Travaglioni. Il Molo, 326 Commercial Street. Johnny Fragaroli from Il Molo is here. Il Nido Restaurant, 257 North Street. Is there anyone present from Il Nido Restaurant, 257 North Street? Il Panino, 11 Parmeter Street. Joseph here again. The Juicery, 58 Salem Street. Is there anyone? Dolce Vita. Dolce Vita, I apologize. We had a problem with the computer over here. It's yeah. present, okay? We know that Dolce Vita is present. Is there anyone present from Juicery located at 58 Salem Street? La Osteria, 104 Salem Street. Danel Di Pietrantonio is here for La Osteria. La Famiglia Giorgio's, 112 Salem Street. Al Giorgio present. La Suma, 30 Fleet Street. Barbara is here present for La Suma. Libertine, 125 Salem Street. Nino Trotta for Libertine present. Limoncello, 190 North Street. Maurizio Badalato, present. Locantes, 114 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Locantes, 114 Salem Street? Local Inc., 352 Hanover Street. Jennifer Vittori is here for Locali. Locantes, 114 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Locantes, 114 Salem Street? Luca North End, 226 Hanover Street. Ted Kennedy, Luca Restaurant, here. Mama Maria, 3 North Square. Bruce Daniel, Bruce Daniel here. here. Massimino Cucina Italiana, 207 Endicott Street. Paul Gamori here from Massimino's. Modern Pastry, 257 Hanover Street. John Piccarello here from Modern Pastry. Monica's Trattoria, 67 Prince Street. Patrick Mendoza, uh, representing Monica. Mother Anna's, 211 Hanover Street. Michael Caporal, representing Mother Anna's Restaurant. Neptune Oyster, 63 Salem Street. Jeff Nace, Neptune Oyster. Nico, 417 Hanover Street. Nico Brown, on for Nico Restaurante. North Street Grill, 229 North Street. Robin Seidel for North Street Grill. Pagliuca's, 14 Parmenter Street. Is there anyone present from? Joe, yeah, Joe Pagliuca for Pagliuca Restaurant, present. Ponza? Is there anyone present from Ponza? Joe Pinarello from Ponza received it. Carla, 230 Hanover Street. Is there anyone present from Parla, 230 Hanover Street? Parzial Bakery, 80 Prince Street. Angela Parziali. Sandra Queso for Parziali's Bake. Polly's, 65 Salem Street.
Is there anyone present for Polly's 65 Salem Street? Paul Barker, present from Polly's. I just uh, got a text from um, the juicery. They didn't get an email, um, but I'm going to have them uh, log in. I'll send them the information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Polino's to Prince Street. Frank Polino present. Polino's. Preza, 24 Fleet Street. David Petrelli, present. Preza. Quattro, 264 Hanover Street. Joseph Di Pasquale, Pasquale, present. Rabia's Dolce Fumo, 71 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Rabia's Do Dolce Fumo, 71 Salem Street? Regina Pizzeria, 11 Thatcher Street. Free and Ross for Regina Pizzeria. Rigoletto, 115 Salem Street. She said what she's about. No, she said Free and Ross for Regina Pizzeria. Is anyone present from Rigoletto, 115 Salem Street? Rena's, 371 Hanover Street. Nick Varane. Ristorante Lucia, 415 Hanover Street. Philip Frateroli for Ristorante Lucia. Rocco's Cucina and Bar, 450 Commercial Street. Rocco Zagarella present, Rocco's Cucina. Scopa, 319 Hanover Street. Gennaro Riccio present. Julio's. 240 Hanover Street. Present. Sorry, someone present from Spag Nulos? Yes. Steve Gilman. Strega, 379 Hanover Street. Nick Verano Table, 441 Hanover Street. Jen Royal from Table, present. Toronto, 210 Hanover Street. Jose and Ana Duarte present. Teramia, 98 Salem Street. Carla Gomez present. Theo's Cozy Corner, 162 Salem Street. Is there anyone present from Theo's Cozy Corner, 162 Salem Street? That's my name. It's here. Yes. Did you want to move again? Is anyone present from Theo's? Giovedio, please present. Trattoria Il Panino, 280 Hanover Street. Joseph Di Pasquale here. Tremonti, 76 Salem Street. Tremonti is present. Tresca, 233 Hanover Street. Peter Weber for Tresca is here. Villa Francesca, 150 Richmond Street. Uh, Thomas Salmeron is here. Vinoteca Di Monica, 141 Richmond Street. George Mendoza is here. Thank you. As I stated, if you uh, represent a licensee that was not called, please enter your name, your license premise, and the address in the chat, and we will make a note of your attendance. And with that, I will turn it over to Chairwoman Joyce. Thanks, Leslie, and thanks for going through that roll call. And again, I repeat, I really appreciate everyone joining us today at the last minute. Um, we're here to help you. The city and, and the board understands that your industry has really been hit by the effects of COVID-19. We really do understand that. And that is why we put a team in place as early as May 18th to try to help improve these applications for outdoor space. We wanna see you succeed. This is our way of trying to help bring some relief to your industry. We realize it's not easy. We wanna we want see your neighborhoods activated and wanna see your customers return with confidence. We have tried to balance your needs as restaurant owners with those of the residents in your neighborhood. We've asked the residents to be flexible and, understand as we, and understanding as we rolled out these outdoor eating areas. There are a lot of restaurant owners that are doing a great job and I commend you. Your neighborhood looks great. You have followed the guidance, but we need every single one of you to follow the rules. We need everyone's cooperation. 
we need you to follow all of the rules and regulations that have been provided to you in writing every step of the way. We need you to read the conditions on your outdoor dining approvals and we need you to abide by them. We need you to read them and ask us questions if you do not understand. Public health and safety is of the utmost importance to the board. Staff across numerous city departments have worked together to provide you with details and guidance on how to operate safely. You must read those requirements. You are responsible for following them. These temporary extensions, this program was structured in a way so we could act quickly. It also allows us to rescind these extensions as necessary for public health and safety concerns or for any reason at all. Each of you has been given permission to set up on an outside space. Each of you has signed and each of you has returned to us a form that says you have promised to abide by all of the rules and regulations, including the state of Massachusetts COVID-19 restaurant checklist. You must have a copy of that approval on your premise at all times. The approval outlines in great detail where you are approved to set up on your outside dining space. This is the only space you are permitted to occupy. Should you want to change your permitted space, please contact our office today. We will review your request. You cannot take over additional public or private space without permission. We will be inspecting, so I strongly suggest that if the outdoor space of your dining area does not match the approval, you remove your stuff today and only occupy the space that you have been given permission from the board. Your approved space is right on your approval. If you don't see it, you have not been approved. If your approval does not match what you are using for outdoor dining, you are in violation. Any violation may result in additional disciplinary action against your annual license, but I can assure you starting today, your outdoor extension will be revoked. Our license premise unit and inspectional services will be going out to do random inspections. As I've said this before at hearings, your right to occupy a city space for outdoor dining is a privilege extended to you by the city. You have no right to it. With that privilege comes responsibility and the responsibility includes following our rules and regulations and not just some of them. St starting today, you will be subject to random inspections. You have no right to a hearing if you are using your outside extension in a way that is not permitted. This is how it will go. You will be asked to show your approval and if upon inspection you are not occupying the right space or you're not following any of our rules, including spacing tables six feet apart, your guests will be asked to leave immediately. Your approval for the out outdoor extension will be immediately revoked. We are not waiting for people to pay their bills. They'll be asked to leave right away. Ignorance of the law the guidance or any condition issued by the board, ISD, the city or state, federal go government is not an excuse. This is exactly what is written on your approval. We will then do a complete inspection of your license premise, the inside seating area. And if there are any violations, you will be written up and face a dis disciplinary hearing before the board. So let me be clear, any violation of the outdoor extension will, be, uh, will result in an automatic shutdown of the outside space. This will then lead to an indoor inspection which you do have a right to a disciplinary hearing. There is no right to a disciplinary hearing for the outside space. I will go over some of the rules and regulations and ask Leslie to fill in where, where I have not covered them. Tents are not permitted, umbrellas are. There is no outdoor entertainment. Music should not be emanating from the windows of your restaurant. You are in a neighborhood. Your neighbors have given permission for you to use these outdoor spaces. On weekdays, you must stop serving at 10 p.m. All patrons must be off your outdoor patio by 10.30. There is no exception. On weekends, it's 11 p.m. and all patrons must be off your patio by 11.30. All amenities in areas not employed for food and beverage, couches, dance floors, pool tables, etc. I don't think you have pool tables on the street. They must be removed or closed to prevent gathering of customers. Tables and chairs only. Follow the state guidelines regarding social distancing. We will be going out and measuring six feet apart. Your barriers must be approved by the city. 
you must comply with all social distance guiding, guidelines from today moving forward. Temporary ramps on public property have to be located so that we can ensure the space is accessible. Animals are not permitted on the outdoor extensions per health code and state law, with the exception of certified service dogs for persons with disabilities. Today's hearing is your warning. We will immediately revoke your approval to have outdoor dining. You will be putting your other license to operate at risk as well. We appreciate the challenges these measures place on your licensed business, but we are confident that we can work together to help you get through this difficult time. We want to help you. You have to read the rules and regulations and abide by them. Contact our office with questions. My staff is available all day and all night and on weekends. We have not taken a break. We're committed to working with you to address all these challenges so that we can operate in a safe way. Leslie, can you please go over some of the um, other complaints we've received that I have not covered? Certainly, thank you, Chairwoman. As the Chairwoman stated, this is a privilege to operate. This is not part of your annual license. Any disciplinary action that you face for this temporary extension will lead to potential additional disciplinary action regarding your annual license, which could include suspension of that license. The temporary extension can be revoked at the board's discretion for any reason. That is very clearly written on the license you are given and is repeated over and over again in the interdepartmental guidelines that you were given. These guidelines, as it states in your license, will be updated from time to time as this situation moves forward. Many of the complaints that we have been receiving have been about licensees taking over more space than they were approved. As the chairwoman stated, you were given very specific areas that you could utilize. Just because you would prefer to take up additional space or separate space does not permit you to do that. Public safety is the utmost importance to the board. We have also received numerous concerns about the types of barriers that are being used. So you must ensure that you're abiding by all guidance on barriers that the board and any other city department has provided. This is not just to protect you and your patrons, but is to protect everyone in the community. You have a legal obligation to monitor this temporary extension at all times. You have to ensure that your patrons and your staff are adhering to all of the social distancing guidelines required by the state as they may be amended from time to time. If you do install, umbrell install umbrellas, they may not go out further than the area you were allowed to occupy. There is no outdoor entertainment. That includes live music and non-live music. You cannot play background music on these outdoor areas. Additionally, you cannot turn up the music in your licensed premise so that it emanates onto these outdoor areas. The closing hour, as the chairwoman stated, is 10 p.m. on weekdays. 10 p.m. with all patrons off by 10.30. That means at 10.30, there should be no one sitting in these outdoor extensions, not paying their bill, not waiting for their food to be packaged. They must be off of the licensed premise on weekdays at 10.30 p.m. Weekends, 11 p.m. with all patrons off the licensed premise by 11.30 p.m. No licensees were given permission to install any sort of permanent structure. That includes fencing. If you installed any sort of permanent structure, you will be found in violation and the temporary extension will be immediately revoked as the chairwoman said. For as many complaints as the board and other city departments have received, we've also received a tremendous amount of positive feedback. And as the chairwoman said, we understand that the vast majority of licensees, both in the North End and throughout the city are good operators and are simply trying to do the right thing and get their businesses back up and operating. However, we will not look the other way for any violations of what the chairwoman has mentioned or anything that is stated in correspondence you received from this board or any other city department. Additionally, there is no smoking on these temporary extensions. Any licensee who's found to allow their patrons to be smoking on these temporary extensions will not only face the immediate revocation of the temporary extension, but may also face additional disciplinary action from the Inspectional Services Department. As the chairwoman stated, 
We understand that this is a learning process, but some of the violations that we have seen in the North End, and I can tell you that the chairwoman herself was out conducting inspections this weekend. Some of these violations have been egregious and we do not take this lightly. As the chairwoman said, we are here to answer any questions and we are working around the clock to try and work with all of you and answer any questions you have. I would take this opportunity to review again all of the interdepartmental guidance that you were given as part of this process. As the chairwoman stated, you must have your physical approval posted in, the li in your licensed premise. If you do not have that physical, physical. written approval posted, you will also be oh. in violation. We want to work with you. We want this program to be a success, but the board cannot tolerate violations. Does ISD or um, BTD have any comments that they'd like to share? Uh, Chairwoman uh, Damon, as Commissioner by ISD, um, I think I think you you and the executive secretary have covered everything um, quite well, and I, I just wanted to recognize um, the, the partnership that you know all these restaurant owners have had with ISD um, over the years, and even throughout this pandemic, we've been able to you know work with you all, whether through educational um, opportunities when when this all first started, you know, walking out in the streets and talking to uh, business owners and operators, and you all did a fine job with the, with handling the takeout. And whatnot, and I also just want to recognize the the participation a lot of the restaurants and business owners took in the early stages of this pandemic in in, in supplying um, PPE to to rest uh, that was collected with uh, the help of some other departments to um, local hospitals and such. And you know, we realize that you all take this as serious as we do with with respect to helping to stop the spread of this um, disease and and hopefully getting us back to normal as quickly as possible and your cooperation with these items that have been listed by the board will will help with that going forward thank you todd do you have anything you want to add no i appreciate all the time uh that everybody's put into this and i appreciate the attention that all of these restaurateurs have paid to uh public safety and that is my department's uh, first and foremost uh, concern in all of this. So thank you everyone for following the rules. And I do want to reiterate, most of you are following the rules. The ones that are not just contact our office will help get you in compliance. We don't want to see this program end and it shouldn't have to end. It's been successful for the most part, but we need to work together to, to remedy the, the ones to remedy the situations that are not following the guidelines. There is a solution to every problem you have out there and we'll work with you to figure that out. Um, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? None at this time, thanks. I don't, thank you. I'm happy to answer questions directly from any of the licensees and to have a conversation. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, and this is, happens indoors. There are times when people bring a dog in and we tell them no dogs. And then they say it's a service dog. And then when we ask them, and this happens when we've asked them for paperwork, they tell us that they do not have to show us their okay. paperwork. Now, I mean, if we have to police people with service dogs and they're lying to us, I mean, they end up putting us in a, in some, in a, in a predicament. No, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that question. I, I think that's happening in lots of neighborhoods in the city. And uh, Dan, do you want to address that? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so you have a right to ask when someone comes up with a, with a dog, is, is that a service dog? And you actually have the right to ask what service do they provide? Uh, paperwork and such is a little bit different, um, but you, you do have the right to ask that question. And obviously, you know, you can only operate on the information that you're given. Um, the, the dog situation, you know, Let's face it, a lot of folks show up with the dogs and, and, and don't necessarily have um, a service need. And, you know, we just ask that, you know, we're, we're cognizant of that. And quite honestly, we've had, had conversations with, with businesses and other uh, neighborhoods. I don't believe we've had any complaints of this in the North End specifically, but in other neighborhoods, we had complaints about folks um, advertising, you know, puppy friendly patios and such. We just want to reiterate that 
that's not okay. You know what I mean? That's, that, that, you, you all know it's, it's a violation of food code and, you know, animals aren't allowed with the acceptable service dogs. But yeah, so you have two questions you can ask without any legal issues. It's, it's, is that a service animal and what service does it provide? Okay, I got one more thing too, real quick. Um, have you guys ever thought of putting speed bumps on Hanover Street? I think that would, we have people that are drag racing down the street and honestly, restaurateurs should not be blamed for that. Um, we're all gonna work hard to make sure that this is perfect and we want to come. We want to come back, and we want to do this right. But I think speed bumps resolve a big, big problem because we have people on motorcycles driving down here, like like it's a, a a racetrack. And every night we have groups of you know people in convertibles and in fast cars revving up and drag racing. So I just don't want people to be blaming us for all the noise. Speed bumps. No, I I appreciate that. We don't blame you for all the no for all the noise. But I have Todd Liming on, and he can address he can talk a little bit about why Hanover Street has not been closed down or why there's no speed bumps. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, I will mention that uh, the notion of uh, closing sections of Hanover Street to vehicular traffic has been discussed internally uh, between Public Works and VTD and other departments here. Um, we have not made any final decisions on any of that. We will continue to evaluate those possibilities going forward for the rest of the season. Um, I don't know what's going to end up happening if any particular sections are going to be shut down to vehicular traffic, um, and if so, which ones. Um, so I don't have answers to that right now. As far as speed bumps goes, uh, that's a little bit of a different story. Um, there is a pretty uh, thorough traffic analysis, um, warrant analysis, I should say, that needs to happen before any sort of traffic control devices like speed bumps can be installed. It's not just a matter of uh, saying people go too fast here and throwing them down on the street. There's um, a pretty hefty uh, warrant analysis that needs to be done um, in coordination with uh, the federal MTCD guidelines um, that prohibits us from just going in and installing them wherever we want. So um, we can certainly take a look at uh, the speeds that are happening on Hanover Street and um, consider putting speed bumps down. That would be at the uh, direction of the transportation department. Um, but those are, that's not something that could happen today or tomorrow um, or even in the near term. Um, that would be a, a longer term uh, traffic warrant analysis that would need to be uh, done. Okay. I have a question. When you say the approval that we need to have in our window, is that just the email? Is it, what does it look like there's like a certificate or anything? No, that's it. That's it's it. the email and the letter. And you, you received the email that very specifically detailed the space you were approved for. And then there is a letter that specifically lays out much of the guidance and says, you must sign this, return this to the board via email and post it prior to operating. If you have not done that, you need to do that immediately. Okay. So I just want to address one question that's in the chat from Justin about whether this is about a virus or dogs and speed bumps. This is about a virus. And it's also about the city trying to work with you. We can't, we can't just eliminate every law and rule and regulation in the state and city. And it's still not, you're still not able to bring dogs except for service dogs into restaurants. We can't just put speed bumps down on Hanover Street overnight. There's a larger process involved. So we, we all got together, we brainstormed, said, geez, what can we do for these restaurants in a matter of a couple of days? And that's what we are able to do. And that's what you see in the North End right now. Hello. And anyone asking question, if you could please state your name and what license premise you are with, so we could keep this for the record. No. Hi, this is Nick Verano from Strega. I have a question. I have an entertainment license inside for live music because uh, I have actually a North End group that does a cappella, and I've had it for about 15 years. Um, can I continue to have the acapella uh, where I have the entertainment license to have them that I got 15 years ago? Currently, we are finalizing additional guidance on entertainment, but the governor's guidance was very clear that anything incidental to dining, such as the use of stages, of pool tables, as the chairwoman referenced, is not permissible. So at this time, that is also not permissible. Um, I believe that in the coming weeks that may change, but we cannot be more lenient legally than the governor's guidance. And we are, we understand there are a lot of questions around entertainment and we're working actively right now to uh, draft guidance to send to all of our licensees to make sure 
that everyone is clear about what is and is not allowed. And if it's something that people have questions on, please reach out to our office. As the chair said, we understand this is a learning process. We understand much of this is not clear. We're trying to work with you all uh, to make sure that everyone understands what we're doing. Follow up on that. I have no stage, there's no microphones. It's strictly, it's actually a North End group that's been in the neighborhood for 100 years and it's just them using their vocals in its indoor entertainment license. So uh, they were out of work. I helped them come back to work. I just want to know if I should continue to have them or not have them. It's only indoors and there is no stage, no microphones, no nothing. Okay. What I suggest is I think we need to look at that in writing, like where they are in the restaurant, how you're social distancing. Um, I'm open to any, any idea you have and seeing if it works and if it fits within the guidance. It's hard to come up with you know, one, fits, one size fits all rules and regulations. So if you wanna shoot us an email and describe where they are in the restaurant and how they are gonna be social distancing, we'll take it under consideration. Right now, I, I can't promise you it'll be a yes, but I do expect the state to release additional guidance in the next days and weeks. So even if you, we have that email on file when we do think it's appropriate, we can work with you to make sure you have the right to do it. But your current non-live entertainment is fine, obviously but we have to look at these live entertainment um, one-offs um, as they come in, trivia. Other neighborhoods are trying to do karaoke. So um, if you could just send us an email, and describe. I understand why put people back to work, so do we, so I'm, I'm open to it. I just wanna see it in writing. Okay, thank you so much. Hi, this is, uh, Paul. Hi, this is Frank. Thanks, okay. Paul from Massimino's is next. Thank you. Uh, this is Paul DeMoy from Massimino's. Thank you for your time, everybody. I know you guys are working really hard, and you guys know we want to make it a, a goal for the North End, so hopefully we can all work together. Um, that being said, uh, the pickup zones for pickup for uh, deliveries, uh, Uber Eats, so on and so forth, are those still in existence, or are they not? I, I guess it depends. Do the pickup zones get taken over by an outdoor dining space? Yes. Yeah I, can, yeah, I can address that. Um, so the parking regulations that have been taken over um, by these sidewalk cafe areas, um, some of those are just gone, obviously, but some of them, uh, specifically the ones that we can't really lose on a permanent basis, um, are going to be relocated somewhere, specifically handicap accessible parking. Um, we also are going to look to uh, find new spots for commercial loading. Um, passenger pickup drop off is um, a little further down on the priority list for us to be completely honest, but um, as long as we can find sufficient space for the needed handicap parking, um, commercial loading, uh, and that type of thing, we can try to replicate at least some of the other types of regulations uh, that we've lost through this initiative. Okay, thank you. And, uh, one Just want to, go ahead. Sorry, no, you go ahead. Oh, one more question. Um, so a lot of residents have asked uh, if, if the parking spots that are being taken up by, by the businesses are being placed, and what is the answer, or is there an answer? Todd? Yeah, so uh, are you referring to the uh, basically parking for residents? Is that what yeah, you... Basically, uh, I, got, I took up two spots, you know, it, you know, and people say, you know, what is the, you know, I heard the city's doing something, and I just, like, I would love to give them an answer if there is one. Sure. Yeah, so uh, the city has reached an agreement with um, the owners of the Government Center Garage uh, for a number of essentially free parking spaces for residents of Hanover Street and Salem Street. Um, I don't know a lot of the specifics regarding that program. You can reach out to the Transportation Department, uh, and I'm happy to put you in touch with the right people uh, after, the, after this call's over. Um, but those residents uh, who have had some of their parking displaced um, would potentially be eligible for free parking spaces in the government center garage um, for the duration of this program uh, through the fall, essentially. Thank you. I have a quick question. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, sir. Hi, this is Franco Grosseffa from Dolce Vita Restaurant. Can you please resend me those papers that I need to sign, if it is possible? Yes, we'll email that to you today. And then if you could send it back to us. Yes. I appreciate it. And thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, we're happy to we're happy to help you. We thank will you. help 
in any way we can. And I just want to mention um, two more things and ask Leslie to um, explain it some more. Um, you can have couches in your space. It was, it was determined that we're trying to prevent people gathering. We have been asked about um, picnic style seating in other parts of the city for beer gardens and we're saying no, it has to be tables and chairs. Um, in the lounge areas that are being set up, that's definitely a no. So we're going to say no couches at all. And I'm sorry for the places that have already put couches out, they're going to have to be removed. Hi, and this is the outdoor of the San Sebastiano restaurant from the, uh, on 288 Hanover Street. Can I also get the paperwork resent to me, please? From what restaurant? Saracino and the Bella Vista on Hanover Street, 288 and 286. Okay, if you don't receive it by, by 5 o'clock, call our office as well. We want to make sure we have the right contact information for you. Can I have your phone number, please? It, it actually, if you could either call or email, because the, it, email is probably better, if you could email licensing board at boston.gov, we will look at what you've been approved for and reissue any approval. And another comment about outdoor speakers. We can't, allow, we can't allow televisions and speakers outside. It's a public safety concern with having wires going across sidewalks and again, Pointing to the lack of community process we had for this, we really asked the residents to be patient and to be understanding. So if you if these places had outdoor entertainment, it would require a far lengthier process with more community input. So we're pleased asking you today to remove the speakers and any entertainment you have outside. In other neighborhoods, people are doing cornhole. We're not allowing that as either. So it might change, but right now that is our policy and those are our rules. Just to follow up on some of the questions that are in the chat, for indoor hours, your indoor hours are the hours for which you have been approved annually. There is no change in phase two to your indoor hours. However, the hours, as we previously stated, specific to the temporary extensions remain 10 p.m. during the weekend, I'm sorry, 10 p.m. during the week, 11 p.m. for the weekend. Uh, we also saw that somebody had a question on capacity. And that's something that we have been working very closely with our Assistant Commissioner Manning and his team. Um, right now, you, the requirement under the state's guidance for inside dining is that you cannot have tables closer than six feet apart. So it's not a question of capacity, it's a question of social distancing. Now, the caveat to that is that you cannot exceed indoors what your approved capacity is. So whatever is on your certificate of occupancy is your maximum capacity. We're currently, because this is a temporary program, looking at the outdoor area separately. However, you can't bring those people inside and then go over your capacity. So let's say you have room for 10 people outside, you have a capacity of 30 inside and it starts to rain. You cannot bring those 10 people in if it's going to, one, either uh, violate the social distancing requirements or two, if it's going to go over your allowed capacity. So that's something to be very, very um, cognizant of when you're monitoring the number of people inside your license premise. I just wanna jump in. My staff indicates that Saraceno hasn't applied yet. So that's why you didn't get anything from us because we don't have your application. We can work with you. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, how, will I, how do I do that, ma'am? This is the uh, Bella Vista Saracino. Okay, uh, the, the application's on our website about applying for outdoor dining. You fill it out, you send it back to us, and then we will walk, walk you through the process. We'll turn that around as quickly as we can. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay. I have a question, Peter from Tresca. Can we serve, can we serve just drinks outside or do, do we have to serve food with the drinks in the outdoor space? Um, that's a very good question. Leslie, do you want to talk about it? Yep. So the requirement in order to operate in phase two in the governor's guidance was that you was that you essentially be a restaurant. So the interpretation at the city level was that you have to have food available. The board, when it uh, took emergency action to allow for this temporary extension program, also lifted the condition on licenses that said alcohol with food only on patios. So yes, if you, you can serve alcohol with no food, food always has to be available. You can't just shut down the, the kitchen 
and continue to serve alcohol only. So food has to be available. They do not have to order it. But again, it's important to keep in mind what the purpose of, of this has been, and that is to get restaurants back up and operating, not to create uh, outdoor lounge areas. So just, just to, be, to, just, just to be clear, let me just follow up, just to be clear. So if someone's on the, on the outside patio area having a drink, may be presented with a menu and they choose not to order food and have only ordered drinks, we're still in compliance. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and sir, um, who's applying at Saracenos? Uh, anyone who wants help with the application, John Romano said he's more than happy to work with you. All right, very good, thank you. John's still on the call and he uh, let me know that he's happy to work with you if you have any questions. Can we have his contact number, please? Yeah, so if you want to email me at john.romano at boston.gov, um, I'll send you the application as well as help to be able to make sure you get signed. Leslie, thank you for putting that into the chat. So it's in the chat as well. Um, thank as you. As well as it's on boston.gov if you need to find me too. Good woman, Joyce, if I, if I can ask a quick question. Sure. So th thank you guys for all you're doing. Obviously it's super helpful to the neighborhood. One topic I would love for your team to continue to think about is the coaches. As you know, the capacity restraints are already pretty tight. That being said, having access to the coaches instead of seats have actually allowed a few restaurants to use the space more effectively. So if the board would be willing to allow for coaches, uh, we could possibly implement time restrictions on those parties to sort of negate the issue of gathering. So it would really press the board to continue to think about that. I'm definitely open to that, but can I ask you to put that request in, a, in an email to me? Mm -hmm. yep. I have to run that by our public health experts. This isn't just me being, you know, you know, just deciding to punish someone who's got restaurants. This, no, this was brought to our attention that. as a public health concern. So if you don't mind putting tables and chairs out there right now, you make a persuasive argument. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure public health is okay with it. Okay, sounds great, thank okay. you. Sure. Hi, Michael Caporal. I have a question from Mother Anna's restaurant. Go ahead. Am I okay. Oh, yeah. sorry, I don't know. Um, I have the private uh, private um, dining that we own the property to for the last fifteen years. Now, on the license, it says I have to have everyone uh, off the patio by eleven thirty. Now, that's private property. That's on my license for the past fifteen years. Is the private pop property acceptable to stay till off the patio by 1130? Or I understand. Um, is, it an, I'm saying? is it an approved patio with a later hour? It's been approved for the past 15 years. We had it. We bought we bought that property from the state about three years ago. Now we own it. And my license says off the you know, finish up by eleven, off the patio by eleven thirty. I just wondering, do I have to comply by the street? If you're the same a license, or if you're a license, will... yeah. If your license extends to your patio, seven days a week to from to eleven, everyone off by eleven thirty. That is still fine. That is still fine. Okay. Thank you very much. And I, I just got a request to go over masks. I know it's confusing. Um, what's permitted and what's not permitted. All staff has to have a mask on. The customers have to wear a mask when they're coming and going to their table or going to the bathroom. When they're sitting down, they don't have to have a mask or face covering, some sort of face covering. And we're hoping to continue this outdoor space, these extensions throughout the summer and who knows if the state allows it to go to go further. I want to reassure you, Boston wants to help you. The city, the mayor, the licensing board, all of our departments, we're here to help you. We think it's a really cool thing we've been able to do. We just want everyone to be in compliance. We know we're, we're throwing a lot of information at you. So please call us with questions, call John, call the office, send us emails, we'll work with you. We want to make sure everyone's doing this in a safe way. Can bar areas be used for dining space? Okay, so that is a very good question. You can't have people seated at the bar like a traditional bar that only gives you about three or four feet between the, the diner and the bartender. You can reconfigure, reconfigure the bar as like a table extension 
Um, there's been some pictures circulated. Novara in East Milton did it well. We were out this weekend doing inspections and there were some rooftop bars in South Boston that did it well. Uh, there still have to be six feet between um, each table. But if you had a round bar and you extended a, a high top or a, a bar height table off of it and you sat people around there as a table of six, that's permitted. But then the service part of the bar needs to be separated from them. And if you want to, if you want us to give us a call, we, people will go down and help you look at your space. To, for removal of barriers, contact Todd. Is Todd still on? Todd, I'm yeah. Sure am. Yeah. So if you if you've acquired your own barriers um, and you're looking to have the city on barriers that we placed out there removed. Um, you can, if they're the water-filled barriers, you can just un unplug them, let them drain, and uh, at that point, they should be light enough where you can just kind of push them off to the side so they're not in your way. And then, yes, you may absolutely contact me, um, and I can coordinate uh, the pickup of those barriers. It won't be that day or even the next day, um, but we, we can come get them uh, relatively quickly. Todd, there's another question about barriers. Um, Is the city, do the city, the city provide the barriers? Uh, so the city, we brought city owned barriers out to Hanover Street and Salem Street um, at the very beginning of this initiative um, because we identified the need from a public safety perspective because it was, uh, there were such long stretches where parking was shut down for the entire stretch. Um, and we didn't wanna have um, gaps between the, uh, the cafes where cars would try to sneak in and park and potentially cause disruptions. Um, we are not going to be deploying any additional city barriers um, out to this area. Um, so it is 100% on, on the uh, restaurants to acquire their own barriers and to ensure that all the barriers that they are deploying uh, comply with our guidelines. And that is, as I mentioned earlier, um, a public safety matter. Uh, and that we won't have, we won't, um, we don't, we're not willing to negotiate on any of that. So there's a question regarding the wheelchair ramps and that is something that, um, the Disabilities Commission is actively working on obtaining those uh, additional wheelchair ramps um, to be uh, to be dispersed. Yep, um, we are expecting to receive those ramps uh, at some point in the next day or so. Um, regarding the ramps, uh, just in case it's not clear, you do not have to have those ramps um, set out in place at all times. They just need to be available on the premises um, so that they can be deployed um, essentially immediately uh, in. Is John Romano still with us? I wanted to give John an opportunity to say a few words. Uh, as you all are going through this process again, uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions, comments, concerns, uh, to be able to help make sure you're getting in touch with the correct people. The biggest thing I guess I could say for those that have been approved so far is that if you do have questions, my email is on the final approval letter that was sent out there too. Um, as well as you know that I've been walking around the neighborhood trying to visit you all as much as I can. So please stop me and ask questions as you have um, as you have needs along the way. Remembering that we also need to be good partners here with our residents um, and making sure that we are respecting all these rules so the residents can make sure that they feel safe in the community and also are being respected at the same time. Hello? Hi. Hey, Frank. Yep. Yes, hello. A quick question on face masks, a face shield. Some always a face shield. Do they still need to wear a mask underneath with my server or my chef and the cooks? I was told yes, then I was told no. So if we have a shield, can right? We, can I we think it's fine. Them? Wait, because it, says, it says face covering. Exactly. And that covers all the way past the chin pretty much. So they don't yeah. need this mask, right? If I hear differently, Frank, I will let you know, but I read the guidance as you do. Um, no, oh, that's good. So, so I want to go based on that. And also, I'm still here. I like this is a little Todd Wyoming. You know, we 
the Polinos that I'm talking about. When we did the space and myself and hopefully our Tuesday and Al and Char Bella, we were told to work together. We did that. Now, Miss Few, I spoke to Rebecca, okay? Two Prince Street, Little Prince was supposed to be blocked off. 24 seven, no vehicles supposed to be driving through there. Some of my neighbors weren't sure. I said, no, they're not. And I believe I was told that no one's supposed to be there. So I think the city's come out to put a barrier so no one could drive through there. Unless I'm, I'm wrong, please let me know. I was told that no one could drive through there 24 seven from Little Prince out. They when they could, so you come up North, North Street, North Square, you go down Garden Court. You cannot make, like, make that left turn at all, except for emergency vehicles. So I need, I need some clarification here because uh, I think if Johnny's there or Nick from Chow Bell, I think, you know, we need to know what's going on there. We have the space divided among ourselves pretty good. We're all working well. We thank you, the city, so much because this really helps our bottom line because a lot of diners do not want to come inside. My reservation is they want to sit outside, outside. So what's going on with that? And, and uh, Yeah, yeah so that section of Friend Street has been closed to vehicular access. Um, and that's a section between North Square and Hanover Street. Um, a passable uh, emergency lane does need to be left there, so you can't just put seating out all the way to the opposite curb line. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head what that required dimension is, but I can certainly find that out for you. Um, but no vehicles at all should be traveling down that one block section of Prince Street. Um, and whatever barriers are up there uh, should remain in place 24 hours a day. Okay, we don't have any from the city. I moved one from, from Casa Leche, because again, I'm going to ask about removing these bags. I put one between us and, the, but I think that we need another one to the outside. That, that I don't think we have, I don't think there's an adequate up there. So, and then fill the water so no vehicles can go down there other than emergency vehicles, which is like yeah. 33 feet from the sidewalk. Not, not, and so we'll be making sure to follow that now. Sure. Yep, we can go take a look at that. Um, I will say that we may uh, not want to fill a Jersey barrier completely with water at that location just because we want that to be able to be moved um, at a moment's notice if a fire truck or something else needs to get down that street. Um, right. Okay, okay. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Sure. There was a question about when our inspection is going to be done. They're going to start tomorrow. If you feel you're not in compliance and you cannot get in compliance by tomorrow, contact our office. We're not trying to do sneak attacks. We're trying to help you follow the rules and regulations. But there will be inspections. Is there any discussion, this is Peter from Tresca, is there any discussion about a common valet area since we've all lost valet? Todd might be able to speak to this. I think it's expressly prohibited in the governor's regulations now, but I think it's being talked about for future phases. Is that right, Todd? Yeah, I'm not sure what type of um, additional parking restrictions are gonna be considered by the transportation department out there. Um, again, our two priorities uh, the two big ones are handicap parking um, and commercial loading. Um, for valets, uh, I, re I apologize, I really don't know if that's being considered for any point in the future. Is there any consideration for other um, uh, validation at any garage besides Haymarket Garage? The only agreement that I am aware of is the one uh, at the Government Center Garage. No, I'm talking about validation for the A market where it's $3 for three hours. So that's the only parking garage adjacent to Hanover Street. Is there any agreement with other garages for similar types of um, validation from the restaurants? Yeah, I'm not aware of any types of uh, conversations or agreements with any other garages at this time. Thank you. I just, want, I just want to address a question um, in, from the chat, um, and I should explain this before. The licensing board email uh, goes to me, it goes to Executive Secretary Leslie Delaney Hawkins and to Rebecca Fu. We're all reading them all the time, so that is the best way to get in touch with us. Um, we'll, we'll get you assistance immediately. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, Mike, can I just jump in on inspections for a second? Um, unrelated to the inspections to that we're, we're discussing with respect to the outdoor seating, I, I just, since you're all here and have a captive audience, uh, I just want to jump in about the health, the regular annual health inspections. We've, we've, um, we shut those down throughout the, you know, the, the first few weeks, uh, first couple of months, actually, of the, of the, of the situation we're in. But we've, since we've gotten back to indoor seating, we've, we've restarted regular health inspections and you'll see the, the health inspectors out to do those annual inspections with you all. Um, I just ask that you, you know, we typically it's a, you know, it's a, the PIC usually walks around with, with the inspector and works together through the inspection. We've, we've instructed our inspectors to create a little space between them and, and, and you and your staff for everyone's health and well-being. So you may see a little bit of a different style of inspection happening out there and just bear with the inspectors as we go through that. There'll be, um, there'll be need for that. Um, we may ask your employees to step aside while they inspect an area, check temperatures and do other things. So we just ask that, you know, since you're all on here to, to, to pass that along to your PICs and your managers that, you know, we just, we just need a lot of cooperation with that. So we keep everyone safe and healthy and, and operating in that sense. Okay, um, the face shields question, I am not sure, but that's my opinion right now, the way I re read the guidelines, but I will definitely ask our public health and I can get back to everyone with that. We don't have like a magic book of answers to every question. We're trying to figure it out as we go as well. Hi, Joe. Hi, Somerville Licensing Commissioner Joe Lynch. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I don't understand Matt's question about. Um, I'll take that one. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, the hood sticker. We we, I'll, we had a conversation with the with the fire department, and the fire inspectors on that, and that the hood stickers. Um, I believe the fire department is still requiring that, that, that they get updated um, according to the, the date of the sticker. Um, if you want to call my office or email me um, to verify that, Matt, I'm, I'm okay with that as well. We, we'll just we'll just double check on that. Thank you for your time today. Leslie, I don't know if you have anything else. I think we've um, tried to address every question and every concern. Please reach out to us. Again, our email is the best way to get in touch with us. There's three of us that read every single email that comes in. And we'll respond to you. And, and just to clarify, because I know I think we just saw, I think I just received a private message. For people who have been approved, you received, there would have been a lot of back and forth, right? I know everybody completed multiple questionnaires. We really appreciate all the time and thought that went into that. When you received your final approval, you received an email that said, this is your final approval. This is specifically where um, you are approved to use. And the attachment to that email is the letter that you sign. And the, that email specifically said, please print out this email and keep copies of it on site as well. And the reason there's, there's two pieces is that we wanted to get you guys open and up and running as quickly as possible. And in order for us to get these out, it was just much more efficient to have the standard letter and then personalize your email. So take a look at your email. It would have been um, come from somebody, either Re most likely Rebecca or myself, or maybe somebody else on our team. But if you have questions, please reach out. We're happy to, to look at our records, to look at what you requested and to clarify. Your neighborhood could be the success of the entire city. So we wanna see you guys work. We wanna see this work really well here. And we'll have to work together as things adjust and more guidance comes out. But let's let's all get on the same page. If you have questions, we'll help you resolve it. And please don't, we will post this hearing on the city's website. And as the chairwoman said, we are here, we are constantly looking at our email, we're constantly taking phone calls. If you have questions, if you have ideas, we're here to work through it with you. Um, and, and you know, we really appreciate everyone taking the time to join this call. We apologize for the uh, technological difficulties getting started, and we really appreciate everybody being here and the continuing dialogue. And with that, we will end today's hearing. Thank you all very much.